This is me hanging above crocodile infested water. And the reason I'm doing this is because it's always been on our bucket list to see if something that we 3D printed ourselves could hold the weight of a person. And if it could, how many people would it take to break it? Now 3D printing is the process of turning a digital design like this into a physical model like this. And it does this by adding layers of material on top of each other until the model is completed. Think of it like icing a cupcake, where layers of the icing go round until there's a pretty pattern made on top. Mmm, ah, good. But what you might not know is this process is already being used in tons of different crazy ways. From medicine, to building houses, to being used as parts for rockets that are going to go to actual space. But today, we're going to be concentrating on one of these. This right here is a 3D printer you could order online now and within a few hours be set up and printing your very own models at home. And we want to see what they're capable of and more specifically, how strong the limited materials they can print actually are. It's mental strong! Look at that! To start our journey, first we needed to test every single material we could get our hands on to see which is going to be the strongest for our experiment. So we started by printing a bunch of small loops in each material we had, and we picked this design for a very good reason. Where the layers in a model are printed on top of each other, there is a weaker point where they bond together. Think of it like the grain in a piece of wood. If you hit a chisel along the grain, it goes through easy. But if you go against the grain, it's almost impossible to break. And because all the force we were going to be applying was downwards, we needed to make sure the direction the layers joined together was the opposite way to the force being applied, meaning there'd be no tension on those bonded points, otherwise this would happen. Once we had all of our loops printed, we headed outside, and while soaking up some of Mother Nature's finest weather, we started adding some weight. But before we got very far... So we had a quick change of location, upgraded our gear slightly and carried on. We started these tests pretty confident that either nylon or nylon infused with carbon fibre would be the strongest by a long way, but that didn't really go as planned. Ready? Yeah. If this breaks now, I'll be gobsmacked. The reason we have this problem is because both these materials are really difficult to print. For example, they need printers that can go to super high temperatures and they are insanely hygroscopic, which basically means they act like a sponge to any moisture that might be in the air, which creates little air pockets in the layers when they print, making them drastically weaker, like what happened to our loops here. So we tested the rest of the more easy to print materials that were left until the last one finally broke after adding some makeshift weight. the lightest brick I've ever felt. <laughs> <laughs> now at this point we had a material of choice, so we made it what we thought would be the final design for our big 3D printed versus person test. But just to put it through its paces beforehand, we decided to take it to the local town and challenge members of the public to try and break it. Which was all looking really promising until... Yeah. There oh, go. there it is! This left us a little bit confused and concerned. We have the strongest material and we'd even made our loop bigger, so why did it break? Well, to answer that, I'm going to need some of these and some of this. So when a model is 3D printed, it's made up of an outer wall, like this. Then there is infill, like this. And then there's another wall on the inside. Now this is exactly the same as the walls in our homes. Now whilst this is pretty strong, if we started to replace some of this infill with more walls, it would be even stronger. And if we were to make it all wall, it would be almost unbreakable. <laughs> now as standard, we used three walls for our smaller loop, which means it was pretty much unbreakable, like our solid wall here. But because we use the same settings for our bigger loop, it means it had the thin walls at the front and the back, then the soft infill in the middle meaning the object as a whole was weaker and easier to pull apart. So with all this fresh in our minds, we decided to stick with the bigger link we used in town, but we increased the wall size so it was a solid block inside, like this wall and our original little loop. But with bad weather looming, we had to do the test tomorrow, which meant we wouldn't have any time to do any more pre-tests on our new loops before the actual experiment. 
Now this feels like a good time to tell you about our sponsor for today, Filamentive, who are also supplying all the materials for our experiment. They produce some of the strongest and most sustainable 3D printing materials on the market. I mean, if you're looking for an endorsement, I'm gonna trust it to hold me in midair. And so the next morning we loaded up our equipment, found the ideal location, and set up in the form of a quick 10 second montage. Now this right here is my testing seat, which is then attached to this carabiner, which leads nicely and is attached to this climbing rope, which is then securely fastened to this skip. But in between all of this, right up here, we have our 3D printed link, which is gonna be the only thing stopping me from falling off this seat and plunging into this freezing cold water. Oh, and just for good measure, we're gonna add a couple of crocodiles into this pool just for a bit of extra tension. So after days of planning and testing to get to this point, the only thing left for me to do was to take a seat. Go! Oh, oh my God, he's actually holding. <laughs> Woo! That little 3D printed clip is holding the weight of a very full grown man. <laughs> Less than a full grown. And now we knew that little loop could hold up a modest sized human, I only had one thing on my mind. We need more people! <laughs> So we called in some reinforcements, got rid of the small swing seat and rigged up an old garden swing seat I happened to have lying around the garden. Once we were all set, I got into position first and as Luke joined me... Hold on, is that... <laughs> still nothing happened. For the most part. Even Adam got on the seat and the loop still held. And by this point, there was so much weight on the seat that the tree had bent to the point we were basically in the pool anyway. Which is just bonkers. This is around a combined weight of 260 plus kilogram. But as we aren't people who like to give up that easily, with the addition of a concrete block and a lot of jumping up and down, finally... We were truly shocked by the strength of this little 3D printed link and the weight it could hold up. I printed it at home in 30 minutes in one of the easiest to print and most readily available materials on the market and it managed to hold the weight of three people without too much issue. Oh. Oh. And for more tests like that, make sure you subscribe below.